gosh, these are all gonna fall like any second. It's been, hello, hello to you too. It has been a solid five months since I filmed my last reading wrap up kind of video. I've obviously read quite a few books since then and I really wanted to just sit down and film a video about all of my thoughts. What I rated them, if I recommend them, if I hated them. I have 20 books here that I've read over the last few months. I'm a bit scared. This is just a very overwhelming amount of books to talk about, but I'm also excited. I wanna try and pick them all up to show you just how many we've got here. Oh my gosh, okay. These are all gonna fall, I just know what Okay, do I just don't I've also got a mattress here as well to help me get through these all. I'm going to start with these because these are all part of a series, so I feel like it's easy to kind of talk about them together. This is all but one of the Akhtar series, or what's currently out of the Akhtar series anyway. If you haven't heard of the Akhtar series, I'm very excited for you because it is just a five-star series in total for me. I feel like with fantasy books, it's often, especially series, it's often really hard to give you the plot of the series because if I give you the plot of even the second book, it'll give away the first book. Essentially, it's about this mortal girl, Feyre, who does something that basically gets her imprisoned and taken away by some sort of technically fairy once you read the series, you realize like what a fairy actually means. And it's really, I promise, not what you're picturing. First book in the series, which I talked about in my last reading wrap up, is a bit of a Beauty and the Beast retelling. And then it just goes into a completely different direction. Obviously the first book like sets it up. If you find the first book a bit slow, I just can't stress enough how much you need to keep pushing because these, both the second and third book, A Court of Mist and Fury and A Court of Wings and Ruin, both five star reads for me, they are both. The love interest is probably to this day one of my favorite ever love interests. Like, I'm obsessed. And then we have A Court of Silver Flames, which is probably one of the longest books I've ever read in my entire life. Like, look at that. That is a chunky book. I liked this book. I probably want to give this around like a four star, I think. This is about Nesta Ferris sister. It's very interesting. It is just very, very long. And you've really just got to work through the personal development with her. And it's very long. So I gave that a four star. Also, actually, this is before this one. This is like a little novella, which is obviously very, very short. And I loved this one. I gave this one a five star just because like nothing really happens it's an it's a novella but it's just so fun and happy and you just kind of get a taste of all the characters which i really loved obviously the fifth one as well but i already mentioned that in my last like sit down book video so i didn't want to like really talk about that but the actor series in general wow this was kind of like my first real fantasy series i want to say like apart from harry potter when i was young i think it's a very good series to start if you're wanting to get into the fantasy world which can i just say once you go fantasy why does basically nothing else hit the same i'm gonna have to get at my goodreads as well to remember what i gave everything my goodreads is always in the description box if you did want to follow it's really just updating you on the books that i'm currently reading and i find it very satisfying to like add another book to the list when i've read it next we have better than movies which is a ya romance this is one of the sweetest books i've ever read i feel like i wouldn't be like the biggest fan of ya romances generally only because i feel often they're a little bit too young for me but this was just done so well and this book just felt like to me like you're watching a comfort movie a teenage rom-com comfort movie but also i didn't find it like crazy cringe for some reason basically it's about this girl who is a lot more like to herself like doesn't really like have a lot of friends she lives next door to Wes who's like the popular guy the cool guy and they've kind of always had a bit of like a not enemy but just like a bit of like playful kind of like I annoy you but like I love annoying you kind of relationship their whole life Liz our main character has this crush on this guy basically Wes and her struck a bit of a deal to basically help her with this crush that she has on this boy and then also he gets something in return as well it's like a fake dating trope but just done so well I really really like this book I think oh what did I give this on good reason says I've given it a four I think it was between a four and a four and a half I just love this book and I just feel like this book is like a, a hug in a book next we have the love wager why do I not remember this book Oh, okay, I actually really enjoyed this book. So basically it's another romance, another like rom com -y romance kind of thing. She's a bartender and the guy is at a wedding that she is bartending. They meet, they have a one night stand and then they're kind of like, cool, like never see you again. Then the main girl kind of decides she wants to get back out there and start dating because she had a bad breakup. She starts going on a dating app and then she of course matches with Jack, the guy that she just slept with. They basically decide that they're not interested in each other, not similar at all, but they have this kind of like bet competition to see who can fall in love or find someone first. They become each other's wing person and there's a point where they have to fake date which again when it's done well is just so good and they might be like oh do i have feelings i don't know you know she's like is he just playing the part really well or, oh. it's just a good book i really enjoyed this i would think i want to give this like a four star and it's like such a quick read i feel like this is the perfect like vacation book or just like if you're in the mood for a fun light-hearted book this book has to potentially be one of the best books I've ever read. Daisy Hates the Great Undoing, the fourth book in Magnolia Park series, which is an overall five star series for me. But this book, this is a six star read. Like I can't give this five stars because that just, that wouldn't do enough. Julian, 
Okay, I said before, Reese was my favorite love interest or favorite guy character I've ever read. I think probably fantasy-wise, yes. Julian? Julian. <laughs> I've never read a man like Julian before. Basically, it's just high society London, rich people drama, toxic relationships, and it's the best. I don't think I've ever read so many characters that I just feel such connections to. I folded down so many pages in this book. <sighs> No, I think, no. I know this is my favorite book in the series. Oh, actually, I don't know. What should I talk about next? You know what, I'm just gonna get this one out of the way. <laughs> the American Roommate Experiment, which is actually, I found out after the fact that I'd already read this, but it's like a sister, a sister book to Spanish something, the Spanish Deception or something. Ugh. I really want to be respectful with this book, I do. But I did not like it at all. I think I'm giving this like a wool like a one and a half to two stars. It has been a couple months since I read it, but I was not a fan of this. This was like the classic example of a romance that icked me. It icked me. I did not like the love interest. It's a dual perspective. And so you get, get the girl's thoughts and then the guy's thoughts. They both were just icking me. It's about this girl who her apartment that like floods or something happens to her apartment. So she stays in her best friend's apartment who the Spanish love deception, I think. I think that's what it's called. That was her best friend is like the main character of that book. Anyway, so her best friend and her husband are away, are away on a honeymoon. And so she goes and stays in her best friend's apartment because she can't stay in her apartment. Anyway, then this guy who is cousins with her best friend shows up at this apartment and she's like, oh my gosh, I've been in love with you. Like I, I stalk you on social media and I was just like, it's just a bit strange. Anyway, anyway, and they both end up staying in the apartment and I just like, there was bits in this that I kind of enjoyed. Just overall, this was just not the book for me. It was just so cheesy. And then like the spicy scenes just didn't, didn't, yeah. I remember posting this on my story when I was reading it and so many people replied being like, I love this book, one of my favorite books, blah, blah, There's obviously a lot of people who love this book. So I'm not saying like definitely don't read it, but it did just give me the ick. Doing a 180, fourth wing. This is a fantasy book. I want to describe it as a bit of Divergent, a bit of Hunger Games. There's all these different like, careers that people go into like in Divergent it's like factions so this girl has trained her whole life to be a scribe which is like a writer like a documenter or that kind of thing and then her mum and all of her family are all writers most dangerous like almost dauntless kind of vibe the most dangerous career and thing you can go into her mum basically forces her to go into this writer's quadrant and they basically have to do all of these trials and training and competitions and stuff lots of people die it's very competitive so there's people that are like trying to kill each other and stuff and then if they pass everything paired with the dragon they become a writer they also develop like all different kind of powers when they pair with their dragon. I love the main character. I love the love interest in this one too. He also has my heart. I feel like there's a very strong correlation between like Reese, Julian and Zayden. <laughs> there's just so much that happens and I won't go too much into it because I love going into books like completely blind when I read them. Also, by the way, five stars easily without a doubt. And then the ending broke me. I feel like this is another good book if you are wanting to get into the world of fantasy. You're like the world isn't like too crazy to understand. Just I loved it. A wild, sexy roller coaster of a ride. I have to agree. That's just really all you need to know. Next we have a beach read, which I feel like is classed as a romance, but also kind of like, I'm not sure if this is completely false, but I kind of feel like it's a little bit literary fiction-y as well. But it's about this girl who is grieving because she's just lost her dad. She goes to his beach house to clean out the beach house and, and get it ready to be sold. And her next door neighbor is Gus, who I'm pretty sure they went to uni together. And there was kind of a bit of a moment with them there, but like nothing really ever happened. They're both writers, but they write very different things. The girl is like a hopeless romantic. She writes a lot of like soppy love stories and then Gus is more of like a realist doesn't agree with like the fairy tale kind of romances the back says they're both broke they have crippling writer's block and they need to write bestsellers before summer ends to get each other out of their writer's block they come up with this bet I suppose where each of them have to like swap genres so the main girl has to write this book that's like not a romance and then the guy Gus has to write like a hopeless romantic romance I think I gave this a four stars. I also feel like though, I read it over a long period of time and I don't think that helped. I read it while I was traveling. So it took me like way longer than it should have taken me to read, if that makes sense. I folded down quite a few pages. So clearly I was like obsessed with some of the lines. I gave it a four star on Goodreads and I feel like I stick by that. I feel like it's probably my least favorite Emily Henry book that I've read. Speaking of actually, I have another one that I will talk about. I did thoroughly enjoy this. So like four stars was obviously a really good read. I really like Emily Henry's style of writing because her romances are not cheesy to me anyway. I feel like they're very realistic and show like the ups and downs of two people coming together who have a lot of like stuff to work through themselves and like how they work through them together and I really really enjoy her writing so I do recommend this book a lot. Then we have Happy Place which is Emily Henry's most recent release and my favorite one of hers. Okay I just want to read you this because I feel like this is the best way to describe it. Harriet and Wynne are the perfect couple. They go together like bread and butter, gin and tonic, Blake Lively and Ryan, and Ryan Reynolds. 
Why can't I say that? Ryan Reynolds. Every year they take a holiday from their lives to drink far too much wine with their favorite people in the world. Except this year they are lying through their teeth because Harriet and Wynne broke up six months ago and they still haven't told anyone. But the cottage is for sale so this is the last time they'll all be here together. They can't bear to break their best friend's heart so they'll fake it for one more week. How can you pretend to be in love and get away with it in front of the people who know you best? That doesn't make you want to read this book. I don't know what will. One of my favorite romances I've ever read. I feel like the writing is also like poetry. The way the characters are written just like make you feel so, so connected to them. And I feel like as soon as you're connected to a character in a book, it just makes the book like instantly so amazing. And you can't put it down. You can't stop thinking about it. I already know that I want to reread this book because it was just, because it just like hit me so like hardcore. We're getting there. Actually, I do have a few Kindle reads as well that obviously I don't have the books for, but they are The Housemaid and The Housemaid's Secret, which are both thrillers. I read The Housemaid of Four and then The Housemaid's Secret of Three, I think. A three. Yeah. They're about this girl who has been in jail for murder. She's working like any job that she can basically get with a record. She's broke, so she's really like wanting to take any job that she can. She gets hired by this family, this very rich family, to be a nanny. And all things seem like completely fine, completely normal when she first goes for her interview. But then when she starts working for this family, things just get weirder and weirder and creepier and creepier. About halfway through, there's like this huge plot twist, which I remember being so shocked by. I finished The Housemaid, I feel like in like a day or two, it was just so bingeable. I couldn't put it down. And then The Housemaid's Secret, I felt was a a little bit repetitive. I kind of guessed the plot twist because of the first book. It definitely wasn't bad. I didn't love it and I read that just after Never Lie, which is another one of Frieda McFadden's thrillers, like mystery thriller kind of thing. And I think that also did me dirty because Never Lie was another book that I couldn't put down. I think I ended up rating it through four. Really enjoyed that one, I couldn't put it down. I feel like there is, after kind of thinking of it though, there is a lot of plot holes and things that don't add up in Never Lie, but I still really enjoyed it. If you are looking for a really quick, bingeable, can't put it down, can't think about anything else, have to find out the ending kind of thrillers. I really recommend The Housemaid and Never Lie. Okay, we are getting somewhere. Are you over me speaking now? Because I would be. Next we have The Hawthorne Legacy, which is the second book in the Inheritance Game series. I think these books are YA mystery. Basically the series is about this girl who inherits billions and billions of dollars overnight from a complete stranger. She has no idea why this very, very rich man has just given her all of his money in his will and basically given like nothing to any of his family members. So the main character Avery moves in to the Hawthorne like mansion with all of the family who some of them hate her obviously because this random girl has just inherited billions of dollars that should have gone to them. And there's kind of like the whole riddle to find out of like why this old man left Avery all of this money. So they're finding all these clues and figuring things out. It's a really good series. Very very quick bingeable books. I feel the sh chapters are like two to three pages long, which makes you feel like you're reading so, so quickly, which I then in turn makes you want to keep reading, if that makes sense. I still have the third book in the series to finish. I think I gave this a four in the end. I enjoyed it. I don't know if it's because it's a YA mystery. I don't care very, very much about the characters. Like I'm interested in the stories and I am interested, but I don't feel like a really big connection to the characters. So I think that's why it's not a five star series for me, but I would very, very much recommend this series. It's a very, as I said, quick and easy and interesting series to read. Read. If you're wanting a book that's going to like hook you in and you're not going to get bored, they're quite short books as well, but they're just there's a lot that happens in them, so they're very, very interesting. But yeah, I gave this one a four star, so I definitely very much enjoyed it, and I think I read it pretty quickly as well. Very easy to read writing, just keeps you interested the whole time, which is just sometimes what you need in a book. I've officially started Throne of Glass, I'm so excited to finally be in another big fantasy series by Sarah J. Mass. I really missed it. Obviously, I really don't know much about the series at all. I'm pretty sure it's an eight book series, which is by far the longest series I've ever read. So far, I'm loving it. I feel like, I mean, for one, I don't really know much of the plot and I think it's about to get like crazy in this fourth book, but I went into these books completely blind and I think that's kind of the way to do it. All I will say though is the main character, Selena, is one of my favorite main characters I've ever read about. She's an assassin and she's just the coolest person ever. I really, really enjoyed the first three books. You can either read Assassin's Blade first or Assassin's Blade third. I read it third and I really, really enjoyed doing it that way. I felt like I potentially wouldn't have liked Assassin's Blade as much if I hadn't read these two first, if I hadn't read Throne of Glass. Kind of midnight and then Assassin's Blade, but obviously you can do either way, and a lot of people have different preferences. Yeah, I really enjoyed reading it in this order because this book you're kind of like starting blind, and that's what makes it really interesting, if that makes sense. And then by the time you get to this book, it's like, oh my gosh, these are some of the answers. These couple books that it's been like alluding to, I can't wait to really get into like the thickness, the juicy part of this series. I think I gave these all four stars, all very good, but I don't think any like five, five stars yet. But I have heard that the fourth book is kind of when it all starts to amp up, so I'm very, very excited. Okay, we have two books left. And one. Wed. Oh my gosh, I can literally never say this. 
title red white and royal blue that's one this book i didn't expect to love as much as i did the back says what happens when america's first son falls in love with the prince of wales almost a bit of like an enemies to lovers because they're both polar opposites and it almost like annoys the other person it's such a good book i think i ended up reading it a 4.5 the only reason i think it wasn't a full five stars for me is i think it maybe was just like a little bit too long with all of the politics i do enjoy a little bit of politics but i do just think that it was a bit too much when they were explaining like all of the nitty gritties and i don't think it needed to be in the story all of the characters in this book i loved like i feel like they're all very lovable i just loved them all and i loved the kind of like secret romance that begins between the two of them and then they kind of have to keep secret because of the politics and the ending was so good the ending if you have seen the movie is completely different also if you have seen the movie and are like i don't want to read the book because i've seen the movie i definitely still think read the book because it's different there's there's some different characters even i was giggling when i was reading it i was just obsessed with the cute romance and it like felt real like it felt like i was reading about real people last but not least is funny you should ask which is about this writer who interviews this very famous actor 10 years prior that article that she did on him blew her career up and then also really really helped him in his career as well and then it's 10 years later and she's doing like a follow-up interview and it goes between then and now like what was happening 10 years ago when they first met each other and how what she wrote in the article is very different to like what actually happened which I really enjoyed reading like the article and then hearing what actually happened because it felt it felt quite real and quite like this is what actually happens in Hollywood kind of thing. I think I gave this a three to a 3.5 in the end because I did feel like it was a little bit unrealistic. Like they do really fall in love in like three days and then they think about each other for 10 years and then it's like a huge big deal when they see each other again, which I'm like, obviously you can develop feelings over someone in three days, but it did just feel a little bit, not even unrealistic because like I do, well, I kind of do love a bit of unrealistic stuff in a book. Like it's a book, it's a story. It's like a movie. Like if it's entertaining, then I'm obsessed with it. But there's just like a scenario when like the main girl sees the guy without a shirt on she like can't speak and i'm just like surely you can speak you know what i'm saying i definitely did enjoy it but yeah i don't you just start thinking too much and you're like okay it's taking me out of the story and like i'm thinking about how this isn't realistic does that make sense but good if you want kind of like an easy chick flicky kind of book as well we've done it i don't know how long i've just recorded for but i hope you've enjoyed hearing my thoughts on these 20 books i have also read about six or seven books since but i want to start filming like monthly reading wrap up so i don't let it add up over months and then there's 20 books to talk about anyway if you've gotten to this point you deserve an award for that i love you all very much i hope you enjoyed this little book related video and i will see you next week <laughs>